May the name of the Lord be highly exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Before I share this message that the Lord gave me, I want us to consider the scripture in the book of Romans 2 verse number 1. The Bible say, We are inexcusable, O man, when others seem to be lining up with the souls they want. How many are you going to present before God? So, the Bible is saying we are inexcusable. Well, let me finish this message. You will understand that you have everything it takes for you to minister the gospel. In the facility where the post had made to in Diamond Hill Health Center, here in Calabar, yes, I go to work, and in the morning, I will just be imagining that look at so, so many in this place. And I hardly hear people ministering the word of God, doing morning cry. I don't hear them. I hardly hear people. I, one day, uh, the thoughts came to me that why not I be going or why don't I go to work uh, in the night as I'm going to sleep there? Why don't I go along with my uh, megaphone? You can see this little megaphone. I used to carry it along. So when I close in the morning, I wake up 5 a.m. from there. Before I will return, my closing hour is 8 a.m. So that one week, seven days I'm doing this night, I will use that seven days to preach in that area where I'm walking. Then in the morning, I will dismiss and come home. So one day I was so tired because each time I'm going, I'm dragging this megaphone. I don't have a mobility. I'm dragging this megaphone. I will drag in a distance where I'm staying before I get to where I'll pick a car, a car. Then, now going again to my place of work. They have to drop me somewhere. I still have to trek again with this megaphone down to my office. In the morning when I'm closing, I'll have to trek again down to the road before I get a taxi. So the stress was just much on me. So this night, I was tired. And I say to myself, I'm not going with this megaphone. In fact, I don't want to preach. I don't want to preach anymore. I won't preach. I won't take this megaphone. Since God don't want to bless me. Since I lost the other car, and God don't want to bless me with another car. So I was so angry in my spirit. And I said, I said I'm not going today uh, to the office. I'm not going to carry this trace anymore. Going with this megaphone, trekking. Let me just go. I'm not preaching. So do you know what happened? So while I went that day, I took the decision that I'm not going to preach because I didn't come with the megaphone. The stress was much. So God was watching me. God was watching my heart. He knows everything I was thinking. So the same night, this was a revelation that the Lord gave me in the morning and before 5 a.m. And in this revelation, at first, I saw myself standing as if I was preaching the gospel on the streets in the nearby compound facing my facility directly. I was standing there with another lady, with my colleague that slept in the office. That one is a pastor's wife. While both of us were standing there, the first song that came to my mouth was that, I am running a race to see my Redeemer. You know that song, I like singing it. I've sang that song before in one of my messages here or twice. So that was the first song I saw came coming to my mouth. It's like I was preaching. Then, without the megaphone, and suddenly this was what the Lord started telling me. He said, evangelism is his heartbeat. Evangelism is Jesus' heartbeat. Are you hearing? This is not the first time I'm sharing this message. I've shared it before when the Lord told me that evangelism is his habit. And here is another one coming again. The reason why the scripture says, be fruitful and multiply, is that we should preach the gospel and win souls for him. So God was not taking time to explain to me that the reason why 
uh, this saying is in the scripture in Genesis 35 verse number 11 that be fruitful and multiply. We should be fruitful in this riot. Again, it says that the disciples of Jesus Christ, they were not having car. They were not having any, any car, but they were preaching the gospel. Yet they had no car. Their only source of movement was the boats and their feet. They can track a distance from wherever they are going and they preach the gospel of Christ. And yet they were winning souls. They were winning so many souls for his kingdom. That is what he says. We must not wait until we have a megaphone before we preach the gospel. We must not also wait until we have a car. Because many of us are saying that we don't have a car. We cannot do the work of God. Trek within your neighborhood. If you don't have transport to go to a distance that you, you, you cannot trek, then people are living around you. Preach in that very vicinity. And if you uh, cannot go, or if you don't have a megaphone to preach, then use your voice like the disciples of Jesus Christ. They use their voice in preaching the gospel. Do you know that it's God that amplify our voice? As you go out to preach, you may think that your voice is low. People cannot hear you. Why not you try it? Go in the morning, that morning hour, that noise is not much. People are not using the, on the road. You're not hearing sound of cars, truck, uh, uh, trucks, uh, machine, and other things, bikes, and other things. Go out to the streets. Just start singing a song. Just start praising God with that small voice that you have. And tell the Lord, amplify my voice. You will see instantly that the miracle that God is going to do with your voice. You will start preaching and your voice will be so loud that people, wherever they are, you don't believe, will be hearing the word of God. And many will be, will be converted right in their room there. You may not know. It's not all of them that come out. They need to come out and meet you for all to come. Okay, so why not we go out? You can see that we don't have excuse. And God is saying that evangelism is my heartbeat. We don't have excuse at all. The disciples of Jesus were preaching. They were not using megaphone. The disciples of Jesus were going for evangelism. They were not using uh, a car. But today, when you ask someone to go, he tells you, I don't have a car. Let God provide me a car. Let God give me money to buy a megaphone. You see me, I want to preach, oh, but I don't have a megaphone. I don't have a car. There was one guy that came and met me where I was staying before. We were going out for evangelism. She, the boy now told me that the Lord has been asking him to go and bring souls to him. That the condition is given the Lord is that the Lord should give him a megaphone. That he will use this megaphone and start preaching. I told him, why not you start preaching with your mouth first? Must you go with megaphone? Okay, come and join me. I have a megaphone. Let's be doing it together. Before you know what is going on, this boy has printed a, a, a card. And okay, something like an envelope. He printed it requesting that people should donate money, put whatever they have inside that envelope, that he will use it to buy a megaphone. You have not started preaching with your mouth? And now you are making requests that people should put money in that envelope for you to buy a megaphone. Can you call it hungry preachers? Can you see the way they start? That kind of person, as people collect the envelope and start putting money, a love for money has entered his heart. By the time he starts preaching, he begins to make requests. And these are the kind of preachers tomorrow they go to the market, you see them with their megaphone and you see them with a basket by the side. They are not satisfied because once people start giving them money, they are happy, enjoying it. They don't want to walk. They don't want to do anything. They believe that, yes, this gospel has money. Okay, I'll be going and I'll be begging money. People will give me. I will have something to say. And sometimes when you check all the money they are giving them, they are not even using it for the purpose which that money is being uh, uh, requested for. So, please, you have no excuse, my sister. You have no excuse, my brother. You have no excuse whatsoever to say that that made you not to go for evangelism. Evangelism is Jesus' had been. I've said it before, and the Lord keep on emphasizing it. That Nigeria actor giving his testimony that... The Lord told him a radical evangelism. This is not a time to pet people. When you go out to preach, you don't need to pet them. Many of you have issues with, the, with my nature of evangelism. 
that is me. This is who God has created me to be. I cannot pretend to be who I am not. God has made me to serve him in a radical way. Yes, I am radical for Jesus. I will continue to preach in a radical way. There are times I take it gently. It's not always I take it gently with them. You want to know why you need to be hard with those people? Because they will not hear you, okay? So, you need to go all out. What am I going to do for the name of the Lord? Am I going empty-handed? Is it because I don't have money to pay transport? Have you finished preaching to your neighborhood? Is it because I don't have money to travel Abuja, Lagos? Preach within the, your locality where you are. Preach where your two naira, three naira can take you. If you cannot go for that and that, then preach within where you're staying. Maybe two, three houses there. Stand there and be doing it every day. God is the one that is doing his work. When he see that truly you did, you needed to go far with what you're doing is satisfied. He's the one that's going to make way for you to go to another city to preach the gospel. So you don't need to wait to give God a condition before you preach the gospel of Christ. Are you hearing me, children of God? So let us join hands to do this work together so that there will be revival, massive revival, so that we can join hands together and and depopulate hell and populate heaven to the glory of God. Do you still have excuse? Are you complaining of being healed? Are you complaining, oh, your leg is paining you? Are you complaining you don't have money? Are you waiting for God to give you a car before you start preaching? Are you waiting for God to give you a megaphone? What happened to your voice? Many of you, you have a very big voice. When you want to quarrel, you will shout. Somebody will see all your jugular veins will protrude out of your body. But now you can use that voice to the glory of God. But you can use that voice to shout. You can use that voice to bark like a dog. But you cannot use that voice to go out there and preach the gospel. So sad I Remember the book of Matthew chapter 9 verse number 37. He said the harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. Sister, stand up. Let us join together and do this work. Brother, come. Let us join together and do this work. Don't just sit down there, okay? Let us join together and do it. And as we do it, our crown will not pass us by. It is by preaching the gospel that God gives you a crown. Look at it in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 5 to 7. Do the work of an evangelist. Make more full proof of your ministry, okay? That there is a laid up crown waiting for us, whosoever that love the appearing of the Lord shall receive the crown, the crown of righteousness, the crown of soul winning. And it says, He that winneth soul is wise. Whosoever that winneth soul is wise. Remember the word of God that says again that how beautiful are the feet of them that move with the gospel of Christ. So God wants us all to join in his work. He said, Radical evangelism. Tomorrow may be too late. Start your own today. I have started mine. In fact, I'm waiting for approval from God that if He should permit me, I, 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 the next place I'm going is Abuja. I will travel from Calabar to Abuja. I just want to go and preach in the streets of Abuja. From one market to the other, from one street to the other. If I can stay one week, if God permits me, I will do the work of God there. And definitely I know by his grace, the Lord will convert for himself a soul. But he just need you to go out there. You don't need Jesus to come down the way he is and start somewhere and, and, and stand somewhere and preach for sinners to repent again. He can't do that. But he have you. He have me. We are the people that he created. We are his disciple. We are his servant. We are his children. We are the ones that he is depending on. That we should go out there, join in his harvest, because the harvest is plenty, according to Matthew 9, verse number 37. But the laborers, they are few. Will you rise up and join the laborer of God today? As you do this, the Lord will bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ.